the case study is a company called Farfetch. The reason they're interesting is they IPO'd uh, in late 2018, so they're a relatively recent example. They've been very fast growing, and they're also interesting because they've been uh, losing a pretty considerable amount of money. And so there's a lot of different opinions about uh, where this company will be in a few years' time. So I had applied the same sort of framework that I had put together in a paper that I wrote with Wharton professor Peter Fader, uh, which is shown uh, in the link down below in the Journal of Marketing, to, to kind of analyze and forecast what this company will do in future periods. And what was nice was this company happened to disclose a lot of data about what their customers will do. So what we see in this chart on the left over here is acquisition cohort by acquisition cohort. What is the total amount of gross mark merchandise value that was uh, purchased or sold uh, cohort by cohort? So we can see in the pink, basically all of the sales that were generated in the current year for a particular cohort. And then all those other colors, it's basically what is the amount of uh, GMV that was sold by that cohort in future years? Really helps us identify uh, the sort of model that I had laid out uh, in the introductory slide. And they also provided some more standard data, including the number of orders that were placed in total and the number of active customers that the company had in different years. And finally, they provided some information about uh, their lifetime value relative to their CAC which can provide us some information about, uh, again, you know, what their customers are doing. So I trained that same sort of model that I described on the introductory slide, acquisition, retention, orders, and spend, and estimated the parameters of those models to be most consistent with all of the observed data that I showed on the previous slide. And what we can see over here are actual versus expected charts akin to the one uh, on the left from the previous slide. You can hardly tell the difference between these two. We also track very well uh, the evolution of active customers and of orders in future periods. So again, this makes us feel good that our model is, is calibrated properly. And so one of the big questions was, what does this suggest for the unit economics of this firm? And what we can see on the left over here is our inferred retention curve. And again, this is a, a retention curve that explicitly accounts for the fact that we don't actually get to observe when customers churn. And what we can see is there's a lot of low loyalty customers, very similar to uh, what I had shown in previous videos on customer lifetime value and retention rates for Blue Apron. Uh, we can see that here for Farfetch as well. And we can also see that the amount that's spent when purchases are made has been generally e increasing over time. We kind of roll it up into our overall view of the unit economic health of customers. This is what we see. After customers are acquired, we uh, earn a net present value of about $1,000. That's in variable profit terms. And we're spending about $100 to bring those customers in the door. And a very heartening sign is the amount that we're spending has not trended up. It's actually trended down very slightly. So we feel pretty good about the unit economics of far-fetched customers. And when we kind of roll up all of our prediction analyses into a revenue forecast, again, we're gonna to bring together the flow of customers acquired. We're gonna take into account customer retention, which is what we see in the bottom left over here, take into account the orders that customers wait, make while they're alive, multiplied by the amount that they spend on each of those orders. That's what gets us to our revenue forecast. And that's what we would plug into our standard valuation model. And what it suggested was fair valuation of about $20 per share, which ended up being very consistent with what the firm ended up IPOing at. We thought that this would be really exciting because originally they were targeting uh, lower IPO prices, uh, but it seems that the, the market caught up to us. <laughs> so uh, we ended up pretty much dead on the money. What was interesting was after they IPO'd, the stock surged about 50%. And some of our work uh, ended up getting some media attention in CNBC and elsewhere. But I think this sort of framework can hopefully serve as a guide for how this uh, methodology can be useful for businesses, not only in terms of getting better estimates of how much firms should be worth, but also how we can think about that in terms of each of the kind of customer-driven drivers of it, which can be uh, of diagnostic value as well. 
So thank you very much, and I hope this was uh, interesting and informative.